Do you worry that you won't know what to say when that toxic person gaslights you yet again? Do you stress that all of that hard work and rehearsing is only gonna leave you feeling speechless when the time comes? Or worse, reacting almost as toxic as them? Well, today I'm gonna give you the steps needed to know exactly what you need to say when someone blatantly lies to your face. And not only that, it is gonna help you to keep your peace and have you walking away from that interaction feeling well, rather pleased with yourself. Just as a caveat, this is not a one-size-fits-all script, but the steps that we're about to take can be applied to whatever the gaslighter throws at you. And this isn't just a say this, not that type of video. We're gonna dive deep because I'm concerned more about your mental, emotional, and spiritual health than I am about just giving you some predetermined script. So, what are the steps? Chrissy, pass me the ladder. Here you go. What is this? Duh, it's a ladder. But it's so tiny. Yeah, but it got great Amazon reviews. Okay, we're gonna work with what we've got. Gaslighting is a common form of manipulation that occurs when one person tries to control and deceive another. This form of witchcraft can take place in any relationship, parent, partner, pastor, coworker, or friends. It can even be your hairstylist who tells you you're seeing things or your doctor who dismisses your symptoms. It can be incredibly distressing as its intent is to cause you to question your own reality. And many people, when they realize they're being gaslit, often jump to unsustainable solutions like crumbling under victimhood or calling them out. And that's not always wrong. Well, maybe the victimhood is, but maybe it's not the best. And the reason is simple. Knowing what to say to each and every scenario a gaslighter throws at you can be daunting. It can feel almost impossible to know how to respond in those moments and not spend the next three days rehashing it. Oh, why didn't I say that? Knowing what to say and how to say it can be compared to expecting yourself to climb to the fourth rung of this ladder without taking the first three steps. Now, unless you're a cat or a ninja, you're likely gonna struggle to jump all the way up there. And that could be a big reason why you get so flustered when the narcissist hurls yet another invalidating insult your way because it's like asking someone to do something that they aren't fully prepared and trained to do. You see, the reason you're not responding in a Christ-like manner that you dreamed of comes down to preparation. I want to get to the top here where you're able to respond to the gaslighter in a cool, calm, Christ-like manner. But the problem is you can't get there until you step here and here and here, you get the picture. So these steps that we're about to take, we are going to build a confidence ladder that's going to help you make your way to the top without tripping over your own two feet. So step number one, determine if it's gaslighting. Oh, that's not cool. I came here for solutions, not more gaslighting. Definitely not what I'm doing, but the truth is the term gaslighting has become so overused and abused, and sometimes it's taken completely out of context. The truth is not everything is gaslighting. Not every denial and difference of opinion is gaslighting. Not everyone that calls you out is gaslighting you. But if you're on high alert for being gaslit, you can see flames everywhere where there are none. And sometimes you're dealing with an emotionally immature person who needs to learn how to better finesse their words. Granted, neither one are easy to deal with. However, it does determine how you respond. Step number two. Now that we've got that out of the way, once you've acknowledged that it truly is gaslighting, you're gonna to want to identify your triggers. Again, it's all about me. When do I get to put these people in their place? Identifying your triggers helps you to get to the core of the issue. I know, I know the gaslighter is the problem, but in case you haven't noticed, they're not changing. What can change is you. Because the truth is, there's usually truth behind their lies, and that's why it's hitting you so hard. You see, if Timmy the bag boy at the grocery store said, I never said I'd bag your groceries, you're crazy. 
you wouldn't spend the next three days stewing in frustration. You'd recognize that Timmy's got some issues. Maybe you'd pray for him and then you're going to go home and enjoy your butter pecan ice cream. That's because Timmy doesn't have anything you want. You have no expectations of what you want or need from him. You have no pressing need to see Timmy change. Timmy's dysfunctions don't affect you. You don't need love. You don't need validation. You don't need companionship or support from Timmy the bag boy. At least I hope you don't. And your gaslighter, on the other hand, holds the key to something. Now, it's your job to determine what that something is. And until you figure it out, and how to get that need met through more godly means, there's no script, my friend, that is gonna be comprehensive enough to give you the right words because you'll always fall prey to the need. Identifying what you need and expect from this person and you are going to take the steps towards healing. Step number three, know the truth. What if I told you that it was your job to prove to Satan that he's a liar? You have to convince him. Exactly. You'd think I was crazy. And just like it's not your job to prove to Satan that he's evil, it's not your job to prove to the gaslighter that you're on to him or prove that what she's doing is wrong. You can rest in the truth for yourself, but you have to be able to know the truth to rest in it. And if you're confused about whether what they're saying is truth or lie, there's two places that I want you to go. Number one is God's word. And number two is wise counsel. And if you're being told something contrary to scripture, then you can reject it as a lie and embrace God's truth. Yes, it is as simple as that. And if you've been gaslit for so long that you don't even know what's lie and what's truth, I want to encourage you to get with a good Christian counselor. Uh, this can even just be a, a trusted friend, a pastor, a mentor, or a licensed professional. Whatever you do, make sure they are grounded in God's truth. And if you do need help, we've connected with Faithful Counseling to provide you a counselor that is right for you. So I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. It's hard enough to reject the lie and embrace the truth, but it is near impossible when you don't even know the truth for yourself. Find truth. And step <laughs> number four, speak the truth in love. When you're confident in who you are and whose you are, and remember, this comes from knowing the truth, then you can respond from a place of peace and confidence. Do you see how these are all connecting together? And once you do, you'll kiss those days of over-explaining, justifying, calling out, and wasting your precious energy defending yourself against these abusers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Now you're in a position to respond to those gaslighting comments designed to deceive you because you know the truth and you aren't relying on this person for your emotional well-being. So let's take a moment to talk about some common gaslighting phrases and how to respond in a calm, controlled, Christ-like manner. Let's start with defending. Defensiveness is a common reaction to their accusations. You mean like when he says you're overreacting or she tells me it's all my fault when it's not? I don't think it is. Exactly. Instead of the common knee-jerk defensive reactions, you could say, I'm not interested in debating that with you. Or my experience says otherwise. Are you interested in talking about it? Or it seems like you're bent on blaming me. I'd be happy to discuss this with you when you're willing to have a mutual dialogue. Ooh, I gotta write this down. You got a pencil? Very funny. I see what you did here. Okay, so what about when he talks circles around me and then changes the subject six times? Ah, yes, deflection. Gaslighters can't stay on point because they really don't have any interest in resolve. So they will change the subject to distract or dominate you. Instead of chasing that rabbit trail, simply let them know that you'd be happy to discuss those other issues at a future time, but it's important to stay on subject so we can find resolve. 
You want to find resolve, don't you? Ooh, I see what you did there. That's a good one. And yes, that is what I'd ask them. All right, here's one. What about when he claims he never said that? Or in the case of my sister, ooh, I forgot. Yes, <laughs> that's another gaslighting go-to. So instead of employing your elephant-like memory, recognize that they don't actually forget. So spending your time trying to jog their memory will only prove to be fruitless. They didn't forget. They're just not interested. And instead of being decent enough to say that, they lie. So you could say, yeah, we all forget things sometimes. Are you willing to? And then state your request again. Because that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Because you're driving yourself crazy trying to get them remember what they said when in reality you just need them to do what they said they were going to do. Or you could say, it seems like that you forget things often that don't work in your favor. Is that intentional? Ooh, that's going to make him mad. It might, but that's on him. Okay, what about when I try to share with someone what I'm going through and then they tell me, oh, just forgive her. I'm sure she loves you. I hate that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that minimizing can actually be a form of gaslighting. It's not their intent to cause further hurt, but it does. Yeah, it does. They think they're being positive or encouraging, but they're actually minimizing your feelings and experiences. Instead of getting frustrated or trying to prove to them that you're justified in being hurt, you could simply respond, depending on the closeness of the relationship, and say something like, well, I was hoping for some emotional support from you. I do understand that your experience may have been different with said toxic person, but that doesn't negate my negative experience. If you're not able to walk with me through this, I understand. Or you can challenge the person by saying, how can you be so sure if you haven't experienced it? I'm really liking the directness here. Give me more. It can be challenging to know just what to say at the time of ignition. So when in doubt, ask questions. But avoid questions that begin with, why are you doing this to me? Why? But I want to know why. I get it, but you're not going to get an answer to that. And it's just going to make you look like a victim. Not a victim. I know you're not. So instead, ask questions that require a direct answer, like ones that start with what and when. What do you hope is going to come out of saying such a harmful thing? When are you available to circle back and talk about this? Would you be open to discussing this, or is your intent just to dominate the conversation? Sheesh, you're direct. You have to be. There's no beating around the bush with a gaslighter. Remember, their focus is on self-preservation. So the less desperate and defensive you are, and the more direct and matter-of-fact, the more you'll be able to speak the truth in love. Notice I didn't say, the more you'll be able to change them. Darn. Changing them is not your job. Leave that to God. Fine. If you need biblical proof that God considers gaslighting emotional abuse, go ahead and check out this episode right here. And be sure to grab a copy of our free Toxic People Survival Guide. This is my free gift to you to help you identify and deal with all 